Hi everyone, it's Evan Colbunts, and uh, I guess I'm known for doing projects between LEGO and Apple II. This is, I'll take it out here, this is my favorite LEGO piece. Believe it or not, this is a LEGO. Started making it in 1986 as a way to connect your Apple II to your LEGOs. Um, you need this, and you need either a card for an Apple II, a card for an IBM PC, or a special cable for a Commodore 64, or a BBC Micro, as is. And then you could program this thing in basic assembly code, a uh, Lego TC logo, which is probably the most popular option, uh, or really uh, there was a proprietary thing called Lego Lines, or anything that talks to a parallel port, because this is a parallel device, not a serial device. The 16-bit uh, version that came in the early 90s is a serial device. That's LEGO 9751. This is LEGO 9750. Um, there is a schematic for this on my website. I'm told it needs a few tweaks, which I'm working on. Uh, but even the experts I know say this is very difficult to build from schematics. I wouldn't recommend it. You can find these on eBay or BrickLink for anywhere from, say, 40 to 140 bucks in various states of repair or disrepair. They're pretty hardy devices. I never had much of a problem with them except for some bad LEDs. Anyway, um, today's video we're going to go over comparing three replica cards for the Apple II with the original Apple card. And the star of the show is Blocko. B-L-O-C-K-O, Blocko. So currently there are four approaches to Lego cards for the Apple II. There's the original card, which is this one. Lego 9767. This is a real one. They're pretty rare. Um, I have I've accumulated a few of them over the years. And um, typically on eBay, if you're lucky enough to find one, they go for anywhere from, say, $75 to $150. But they're pretty rare. And um, a lot of times you find people selling everything in a complete set, lots of Lego parts, the interface box, everything there is, but the card. Um, so they are, they are pretty rare. And I'm definitely fortunate to have, to have several of them. Also, um, on these, the cable is permanently attached. That that's not removable without desoldering things. Um, this end is meant to screw into the open slot on an Apple II. So you just, a school child would just put the connector in the back without having to open the computer to, to attach it. This is a Chinese knockoff called the Lego 9767 Reboot. Um, they sell these periodically on eBay. Um, there were, a few years ago, there were a bunch of them. They went away. Some work, some don't work. The one I bought, the pins are, whoever made it, the pins are in the wrong places. So you had to take a cable and splice it or turn it in half. Um, I wasn't very happy with this. It was very cheap. But I uh, sold it or gave it away to a friend because I wasn't happy with it. He loaned it back to me for this demo. <clears throat> this is an example of a homemade one. In this case, an extremely good homemade one um, in terms of the, the wiring quality. That's just wiring, wiring pornography, if you ask me. That's beautiful. Uh, this one was made by Jonathan Chapman. Uh, better known as System Glitch, Systems Glitch in the vintage computing community. Um, I recommend going to his website, look him up, Systems Glitch. He uh, doesn't sell these commercially, but I wouldn't be surprised if you make you one if you ask nicely. I believe he made a run of about five of these. This was the first one he made. Um, it was given to the Vintage Computer Federation Museum back in 2016, maybe. Um, and then later on, it was given to me. Um, when I left VCF and after I found them an original one. So this is one of one or one of five or something like that. It works great and it's a beautiful example of a homemade card. Um, the schematics are readily available on internet, uh, internet Archive and they're linked to from my website and from other people's websites. Alex Dukazi has a link to it on his site. Um, so anyway, they're not hard to build if you know how to make a card, but for most of us, we don't have that skill. Anyway, this is a beautiful example of a homemade card, and it works great after uh, eight years. Still working fine. 
And then the star of the show. This is Blocko, made by Jason Merrill, uh, sold by Joe Strassneider, I think it's pronounced. Sorry if I butchered that. Um, tonight, today is Jason's birthday. Happy birthday, Jason. Sorry I took so long to make this video, but I'm glad I can get it out on your birthday. Uh, it's a really nice card. First of all, it's a nice shade of blue with a block on it, some sort of anvil. If I recall, there was a story to that design. I apologize. I forget what the story was, but it is a really nice card. Um, everything is just soldered right in. There is no exposed wires. Um, you probably can't see the traces on the video. Um, it says here, special thanks to Ian Scott, Joe Strassneider, that's how I pronounce it, Sloopy Malibu, and Sue Herbert, his sixth grade teacher. <laughs> and um, there's 2000 copyright 2024, Jason Merrill. So everything's nice and flush, really good card, doesn't take up a lot of space. Um, in this case, the, 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 uh, the ribbon cable is easily removable, it just goes in there. And uh, let's try it out now. So here goes the test. Right now I have a real Lego card in slot one. I have the star of the show, the Blocko in slot two. I have the Chinese card, the Reboot in slot three. And over in slot five, I have a homemade card from Glitch. I'll explain why I skipped the slot in a moment. <clears throat> this is the interface A, Lego 9750. I already have two whole videos about that. I'll link to them in the description of this video. The box has a power button, or should I say an emergency stop button. It has the wall wart to give it power. 20 pin ribbon cable goes to your card. It has an always on test port, where the red light is. It has eight ports. Um, it has zero to five, which are outputs for Lego 4.5 volt peripherals, being lights or motors. And it has ports six and seven, uh, seven and eight ports. Um, but labeled six and seven, uh, which are inputs for touch and optical sensors. <coughs> uh, these are some of the demos. There's a 4.5 volt motor, 4.5 volt light. These are incandescent, not LED. Uh, there's a touch sensor here, and then there's, I'm sorry, optical sensor and then a touch sensor. <coughs> so we'll put this here. We'll need it soon. Um, put it right here on top of the computer for now. <coughs> code on the screen uh, where it says S equals 1 and then next line L equals 49280 plus S times 16 poke L plus 3 comma 1 poke L plus 2 comma 63 poke L plus 1 comma 0 and poke L comma 0 that is Lego provided initi initiation co uh, initialization code excuse me specifically for the Apple II um, things are different there's different code for the IBM PC and the Commodore and the BBC. Those are also videos on my on my YouTube page. Um, S, of course, equals slot number, one through seven on Apple II. And the variable L could be anything you want. L's easy because L for Lego. <coughs> so if I run this code, now slot one card is initialized, which again is the real Lego card, the original, for a baseline. Uh, if I poke L comma 63, That'll turn on all six outputs, and you see the lights here came on. So I know all the outputs work in that card. And if I were to plug the motor or the light into any of those ports, it turns on. I'll use a light because it's easier to see on the video. See, it turns on, so I know those outputs are working. Uh, the most common failure on these interface boxes, by the way, is the um, the LEDs. So if you see a light, if you get one, you see a light out. Doesn't mean it's not working. Just means the light's probably out. There's also a video on my website, on I mean YouTube and YouTube and my website brickhacks.com on how to test these without a computer. <coughs> anyway, now we'll test the inputs. Oh, the light came up with it, so we'll touch. Try the uh, touch sensor. I'll plug it into port six. And if that light goes on, that means the touch sensor is working. And as you see, those light it green. So they are working. And this one as well, port seven. There you go. So all the outputs and all the inputs on the original Lego card work fine. 
Okay, now we're going to test the Blocko card. That's in slot two. So I'll change line 20 to S equals two. And I'll run that code. Now the card should be initialized. We'll do poke L comma 63. The lights should all turn on. They do. Blocko card outputs work. And I'll confirm that with the peripheral peripherals. Plug in, move my light away from the touch sensor. My wire, plug it into a light and try port four, for example, and it works. So the outputs work on the Blocko card. Now we'll try the inputs. This time I'll try the optical sensor. And we'll try port seven. That means light came on, that means it sees light, cover it up and the light goes off, doesn't see light. So the Blocko card works great. Now I've changed the code uh, for S equals three for the, uh, the reboot card. And we'll do again, poke L comma 63. They all go on. That means it's outputs work. And plug it into port six. Try the uh, touch sensor here. It sees light now, the light's on. Cover it up, light goes off. And we'll try the touch sensor as well. No light, and then touching it, light comes on. So the reboot card also works. So now we'll try my trusty glitch card. And we'll do L, oh, run this code first with S equals five, line 20. And let's see, poke. L comma 63, they all come on. Those work well. Try to motor this time instead of the light. Works great. Now we'll try touch sensor. And it's off, no touch being detected. And it's on, detects the touch. Then the question is, why should you buy the Blocko card? Well, there are several good reasons. As I said, an original Lego card, which would be my preference if money wasn't an object, can easily go for $100 or more, and they're very hard to find. The uh, Chinese Reboot card hasn't really been offered in a year or two on eBay, and they're unreliable. They're cheap, though. I forget what I paid a couple years ago, but it was something like $20 or $30. They were cheap. If they start offering those again, and if you want to take a chance, you can get that. There's the glitch card, which is a wonderful example of a homemade card. Uh, Jonathan's a busy guy, and you probably can reach out to him and ask him to build you one. Uh, his time is valuable. If you have the skills, you can get the schematic on my website or archive.org. You can make one yourself. You just have to get a essentially blank Apple II peripheral card and know how to read a schematic, know how to solder it, which a lot of you do. And I suppose, I don't know what the peripheral cards cost blank, but save you a little money and you have the satisfaction of doing it yourself. The block of card is a wonderful compromise. 70 bucks plus shipping. It's a really nice looking card and it works the first time out of the box and it's readily available. So those are all good reasons to get it. So another reason to get the block of card, which is one of my favorite features of it, is that the ribbon cable header faces sideways, not out, um, which is good because it goes in a computer, right? And the card, the ribbon cable goes straight out the back through a slot. Uh, the Chinese card, uh, it's facing nine degrees, you know, nine degrees per, uh, upright. So it sticks out and gets in the way of any other card. Um, the, even the original Lego card, uh, the original Lego card, it is sticking out, but it sticks out a little more than you prefer. Um, and the Lego card, the original one, has a lot of little solder things sticking out that can hurt your fingers when you're working in a tight computer and all that. So this is definitely the best choice to block a card for someone who wants to buy it guaranteed working, readily available, good price, and doesn't, it's just a very nice card, even got the pretty design on it. Um, a little birdie told me that Jason Merrill is working on another Lego peripheral 
coming out, I guess, in 2025, which is going to be super cool that I'm sworn to secrecy about, but I'm really looking forward to testing that one. Uh, let's just say that whereas this is a replica of existing functionality from LEGO from the 1980s, the new product we're working on is going to create new functionality that LEGO didn't do. So I'm really excited about that. I can't tell you anymore or I'll get in trouble. Maybe they want this back. But um, anyway, definitely keep your eyes peeled for that. Meantime, Blocko Card, I give it a thumbs up. Works great. Over and out.